Hello to all the EMS Today 2019 registrants. I'm Roger Stone, the Medical Director of Montgomery County Fire Rescue Service in suburban Maryland. And I'm also faculty at the University of Maryland Department of Emergency Medicine in Baltimore. And I'm Alan Bush, EMS Battalion Chief for Montgomery County Fire Rescue Service and Chair of the state's Washington Area Regional Council. Welcome to the website and thanks for checking out our video. We're super excited that after some years outside of Baltimore, the managers at GEMS have brought EMS Today back to one of our neighboring jurisdictions here in Maryland. Welcome to our home. We invite you to join Roger and myself as we join the discussion about expanding the tools in the toolbox available to the tr traditional EMS model, as in we want to take you to the emergency department or to a specialty center. Remember back in the 70s, we had paramedics, and in the 80s, it brought us emergency medicine residencies and the regionalization of care thinking brought us a growing number of trauma centers and the like. And the 90s brought us 12 lead EKGs in the field, and the 2000s brought us cardiac intervention centers, brain attack teams, and then stroke centers, but all of these still left us with one tool. You call, we haul to the hospital for both time-dependent and other urgencies. So we wanted to discuss the opposite spectrum of patients, and it occurred to us, if we talk about specialty centers for really time-critical disease, what about reverse specialty centers for those patients that are non-time critical but still need to be seen definitively? Indeed, if emergency departments are overcrowded and we encounter patients that need attention but in a subacute manner, shouldn't EMS have somewhere else to go? So in this session, reverse specialty centers, alternate transport destinations for low acuity patients, we want to give you an overview of the underlying issues in defining low acuity and the opportunities for ATDs to fill a gap, and then take you through our journey in planning, anticipating barriers, collaborating, and implementing a reasonable set of guidelines or protocols that can support these new tools. As the doc and our tag team, I'll start out by focusing on the medicine behind non-time dependent acuity, the hospital regionalization of care paradigm, and review the literature on the dangers of EMS non-transports. Plus, we'll use a couple of case studies to show how this piece completes an ideal range of EMS tools that takes care of all of our patients' needs. And I will focus on the operational opportunities and barriers of ATDs and how they fit into the greater mobile integrated healthcare picture, and then the incorporation of dispatch protocols to select out safe candidates, and then talk about additional safety considerations such as online consultations, and then the handoff of these patients, and then we'll talk about implementation as well as protocol development. We can tie this back to Roger's case studies. And we hope that no matter what stage you're at in thinking, whether you have not yet considered ATDs, or thinking about using ATDs, or whether a mature program is, exists in your area, that this will be a great discussion of many considerations. So just as there will be a whole mobile integrated healthcare track here at EMS today, some of which will include Alan and speaks uh, 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 to the new generation of EMS and community paramedics no longer transporting every single patient, ATDs can be an interim step for those dipping their toes into mobile integrated health. Hope to see you in National Harbor, Maryland, and that you'll consider joining us for this very emerging and important topic. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you there. Thank you.